okay, I'm going to log into Connections. I'm just using a username and password um, to get authenticated. And once I'm in, you'll see a set of services across the top, blogs, communities, bookmarks, activities. I'll talk about those individually. But what you're looking at right now are top updates from my team. These are folks that I know that I work with on a daily basis. And I get to see the activities, the blogs, the files that they're sharing. But also on the Discover tab, I can also see people who aren't in my network that may be sharing information that I might be interested in. And I'll just hover over Rick McCourt's name. Um, you can see that there's a business card associated with him, so I can see all the blogs and profile information about him if that's something that I'm interested in. So you'll see this come up over and over again. A yellow, a yellow bar comes up next to people's names because we're trying to integrate and lock people to content. And uh, this is my watch list. I'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. But here are notifications. These are people who are reaching out to me to say, hey, I want to make you one of my colleagues. I want to be able to be in your network. And, um, and, and again, this is just a simple view of that. But I just wanted to drill down on Carlos because you can see that Carlos and I have a shared activity. So again, these are all various collaboration services that are all integrated to each other. So I can na navigate across the top of these services if I want, or I can kind of, um, I was going to say meander or navigate through by clicking on various co um, collaborate, uh, collaboration services um, in the context of what I'm doing. And I'll show you some examples of that in just a second. So if I just click on my page, these are the different services represented in a, a kind of a dashboard type of uh, uh, format. My profile information on the left, my activity information on the right. But if I go into my profile's home, you can see um, all the different microblogs or all the different um, updates that I'm getting both mine and from the people in my network. So rather than sending emails of here's where I am and here's what I'm doing, we just update this information. And you'll be, you'd be surprised by how often we learn things and figure things out just by having this little microblog capability associated with the people in the organization. So on my page, you can see basically my web white page information, but on the right-hand side, here's my network. These are the various people in my network, along with my reports to chain, and I'll, I'll illustrate that in just a second. So if I hover over Ronnie's uh, uh, picture, I get to see the different components that she has her blogs, her documents, things like that. So again, anywhere I go where there's a, a, a name, this yellow bar comes up and allows me to get access uh, to that individual. So let's click on Mark. I re I, I'm a team member on Mark's team. And so again, I can just navigate up the organization chart um, in that right hand uh, window. So let me just dig a little deeper. These are the other team members on Mark's team. So again, Jeanette and Christina, John, Richard, Debbie, all of these are team members of mine, all on Mark's team. And again, we can kind of organize by um, uh, by group, I guess, uh, by lack of a, a, a better way of saying that. And the other thing is all of this information is pulled from our HR system. So we're just pulling that information in and exposing that to the end user. Just navigating over to communities now, again, you can see this common tag cloud on the left-hand side, which allows me to kind of narrow or expand the view. And if I want to start a community, basically all I have to do is click on the Start a Community button. It's a simple form. I fill that out. It can be a public, it can be a private community. And again, these are just some of the examples of the 4,000 communities that have just sprung up inside of IBM. These are created by end users that may have a, 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 an interest um, uh, in a certain topic or maybe members of a particular um, 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 uh, a set of skills that they want to share. So the idea there is let the end users create the, uh, the, the communities that they, that they want and allow them to manage and control the content and the, and the membership. As I navigate over to blogs, we talked about microblogging, but this would be folks that want to have kind of more of a permanent blog where they can post information, get, uh, get comments on it, uh, share information. You can see that right now we have about a thousand uh, blogs that are up and running. And a couple of other things, I'll, I'll go to bookmarks for just a second. But the idea there is blogs can be integrated with different services. So I want to I want to associate a bookmark with a blog, or if I want to associate a uh, um, an activity with a blog, all of these things can be linked together to make it easier for the end user to get access to it.
The other thing, too, is we got about 600,000 shared bookmarks. So rather than keeping these bookmarks in my browser and private, I can make these publicly available. Now, I can also tag them as public or private, but the idea is sharing this information so that as an enterprise, we can get access to these different bookmarks and what people are sharing. So again, this is just another you know, artifact that I can share and make a contribution to the organization. Notice this pivot table allows me to link a bookmark to an activity, to a community, um, or even say, hey, this, this URL doesn't work anymore. Let's see where we're going next. So let's 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 do some you know search by tag. So again, these are user-based tags. I'm just doing a quick search on property and casualty, and let's see how many have been. Let's see how many bookmarks have been tagged with that. And what I like is on the left-hand side, I can see other types of tags, kind of a tag helper. But not only that is. What are the other people that are related to this tag? So not only am I tagging and searching and finding content, but I'm also so associating that content with different individuals and resources within the organization. And that's really the value is, is that helps me get my job done because I go looking for content, which leads me to people. I can use those people to help me gain a better understanding of the content that's out there. And uh, that's where we've seen the most benefit. I'm just coming back to uh, my watch list for a second. If you notice, I have various individuals on my watch list. These are people that I want to keep track of what they're bookmarking because I know I know that they're very skilled. They, they come up with great ideas. Uh, they have a lot of things to share. And rather than me asking them, hey, what are you bookmarking? This is just a great way to look over their shoulder. And again, what I really like is the different people that are related to these other people. They are now introducing me to other resources and other expertise within the organization. Okay, let's just do a quick overview on um, activities. I love these because this helps me manage all of the different things that I do. And I don't just do one thing all day. I do various things at various times of the day. And I'm constantly interacting with different teams, different individuals. So a lot, what this allows me to do is it allows me to take all those artifacts, the emails, the documents, um, the, the links, the, uh, the to-dos, and organize them into a single view. And since I don't have just one activity or one to-do, what I really like is this ability to see all the the to-dos across all of my activities that have been assigned to me, that have been created by me, and you know see the particular due dates. Now, don't don't get too upset with all the red that you see, but but the idea the idea there is I can go to one place to see what I have to do next. The other thing I really like is this ability to do templating. So um, one of the things that really saves a lot of time is to begin an activity from a template. So let's say that you had to respond to a, a client proposal, or let's say you had to go out and get a grant, or let's say that you had to create uh, an underwriting um, uh, document. Any of these common tasks can be facilitated through a template. Once uh, um, you know a person with uh, some best practices kind of organizes the activity, that template can be created and then be reused to make it easier for other individuals. So I, again, we've seen a lot of value by being able to template the types of things that people do. And again, the other thing is we're, we're offloading the burden from IT. Let the end users, the business people who know what the task is uh, uh, or activity is, uh, perform that. Okay, with about um, um, uh, 60 seconds to go, let me just give you a quick overview on what I like about files. A lot of people store their files on their workstation or their laptop, and then they use email to send it out. What I, what I really like is I can put all my files in one repository, and they can either be public or they can be private. I can share the files with who I deem I want to. And the nice thing is, and this is an example of a document, rather than sending emails back and forth, I just put the document in one spot and updated the document. Everybody knew to go back to that document. So put it in one place. Don't use email to distribute it around because is it version 1? Is it version 2? This allows us to get rid of all those types of uh, you know, unproductive moments uh, during, during the, the, the course of the day. Um, the other thing, too, and just trying to illustrate this, is I can put this information all in one group, like, and we call them a collection, and that allows me to get access to that information or to publish that information. I uh, hope you'd enjoy it. I'll be talking to you soon.